Hey guys, Nate here with PlayYourCourt.com and today we're talking about how to remove the roadblock to forehand power. Okay guys, so we're talking about the non-dominant arm on the forehand and we've talked about in other videos about how important it is to use the non-dominant arm and not have this sleepy arm, but it can also be counterproductive when it works as a roadblock. So let's talk real quick about what we do know about the non-dominant arm. It does several things that helps ensure optimal performance on the forehand. And the first thing that it does is it ensures a, a unit turn on the take back by getting the racket back. It also helps to tee up the ball by measuring where we want the contact. But at this point, some things can happen that actually impedes performance on the forehand. And the one being is if the arm tucks too early, it ends up working as a roadblock. And this is where we start running into problems. As we get through contact, we can't really turn. We're not really sure how to work through it because the arm is stuck. We also see this when the arm gets low. And we'll occasionally see where the swing actually goes over top of the arm. And then we start having rotation issues. I mean, I've seen the arm go up, right? And, and this isn't necessarily a roadblock. They've realized the issue and they're just clearing it in, inappropriately. So where should the arm go? Where should the non-dominant arm go on the forehand? What we're looking for is what I like to call the Batman, right? Or Dracula, right? Like you think about like Batman with the, the cape up to his face, right? Like this is what we're really looking for, but much, much lower. We're looking for it here, okay? This is where the arm is gonna clear appropriately and allow the shoulders to get through rotation and let the shoulders work together, all right? So something that we're gonna work on, if you're really having a problem with this, we're gonna go through a progression that's gonna help. And the first progression is actually catching the racket just after contact, all right? Working through this linear strike. And this is something that we actually see Fed do quite a bit, that as he's taking the, the, arm, the racket back and he works through contact, he's actually swinging and catching the racket here and then allows it to work through. We see it in warm up quite a bit, occasionally in a return of serve while he's playing. But if you look at footage of, of Roger while he's hitting, especially the practicing, he's using that, that non-dominant arm to, to really get the racket out in front after that linear strike, okay? And then it kind of wraps around. All right, so the first progression is finding the racket after contact out in front, all right? And then the second progression is going to be finding the racket at the follow, or excuse me, all the way at the end of the follow through, all right? So now you can see both shoulders have worked together all right, from here, I've kind of entered that Batman phase, right? I'm gonna drop the arm though, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use both shoulders with my hips to get through the follow through. All right, I'm gonna get Scott to jump out here. We're gonna hit a few balls, and I'm gonna show you the first progression as I hit, where I'm really using that Roger, that through the extension, and letting it kind of wrap around. I'm actually gonna just really try to hold it for a moment so you can see it and then i'll show you the follow through at the very end so we can take away this roadblock and hit the forehand with optimal performance and power all right guys so in this progression what we're working on is getting that racket out to the non-dominant hand in front and then allowing the wrist to break and work over we'll take a look at that now All right guys, so in the next progression, once we're comfortable getting that hand out in front, all right, making sure that the extension through that linear strike is, is well out in front, we're gonna go ahead and work on freeing up the hand and allowing it to catch further back, more in the traditional follow through. We'll take a look at that now. All right, so guys, you can see there, like I'm getting a whole, I'm still getting that extension, but I'm really getting my shoulders turned by getting the non-dominant hand 
further back and eliminating that roadblock to the power on my forehand. All right, so guys, get out there, work on it, work through that progression, work through at first, keeping the hand more out in front, a little bit like we see Roger do, and let it turn over. And then finally, once you're a little bit more comfortable, let's go ahead and get the racket all the way through with both elbows, both shoulders fully turned with the hips. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. Um, but look, hey, check out the website. Hit the link below. We've got so much in there. It's not just instruction. We're going to link you with partners of your own skill level. But you do have access to a ton with instruction, including a Q&A, where you can have access to me. And, and basically, whatever your stroke is that you're having a hard time with, I'm going to help you with it. All right, so hit the link below. Check it out. We'll see you next time.